All right, welcome back. Um, now we've got our terrain, we've got a sweet texture on it, uh, but we want to output it. How do we actually do that? All right, so let's close out this window here, my extra, I made a quick open additional window to get that view. Um, otherwise I would have to, oh, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. In the preview, if you left drag up here, you can actually move the direction of the light to get an interesting kind of look at how the light would play off the valley and that kind of thing, or whatever terrain you happen to be working on. If you right click and drag, you can rotate it around in this view as well. So that's kind of cool. All right, so what did I say we were gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about outputting these maps. All right, so I'm already in the output tab here, and that's where most of this stuff lives. So I'll take my basic coverage and my overlay view and move it out over here. I don't know why these arms are going so hinky at the moment. One thing you um, could be, uh, hang on, let me use my words. If these arms are getting too hinky for you, or indeed if you wanted to branch it out, I think you can use these to branch things out. Um, when you hover over it, that little diamond appears, you can click and drag that to create kind of an elbow in it. And then you can move those lines around and get them where you want them. But I honestly haven't really had this kind of trouble with these uh, connections before trying to weave around. Right, so we already have a height output that comes default with our um, base project. If you don't have it already, uh, it's the second button across here. We have a height output. If we double click on that, we have our options for outputting. So we can choose what format we want to use. We can have a low precision or 8-bit format, which means that it's not going to contain quite as much information. So the difference between black and white in 8-bit is lower than 16-bit. So high precision 16-bit means it's going to have twice as many different shades between black and white and thus contain more detailed information for your terrain. Um, depending on your application that you want to use it for, um, I don't know any situation where you wouldn't use 16-bit, but there probably is one. Let me know if you do, then I'll be educated. You can export to things like Terragen, um, PNG, which is the format I think I'll be using. Uh, also RAW 16. RAW is the format that you'll probably be using with game engines like Unity or Unreal or anything like that. Um, they want that raw 16-bit input um, so that they can process it and do the level of detail and stuff like that. It just works a lot better that way. So um, for our purposes, I'm going to choose PNG because I'm probably going to do the next bit in um, 3D Studio Max. Uh, and then I think in a subsequent one, I'll probably do the, the one in a game engine. So anyway, I've chosen my format. Um, I've got a file name here. Uh, I can just hit set and then pick where I want to export it to. So I'll call this one height... Height test one height. And then once I've done that, I have to write the output to disk. So you may find that it says your um, graph must be built before you can export this. If you haven't already run a process on, uh, on your entire tree, there may be a particular node that hasn't been calculated uh, on the way to this height output. And it'll do that for you and then output the file. So we've got the height output. Now let's output the color texture. So um, uh, the bitmap output, the colored floppy disk icon, if any of you know what a floppy disk is anymore, that's what that is. We'll click on that and then we'll place it anywhere on the canvas here. And we can just drag straight from our basic coverage macro that's actually generating our color texture, plug it into the RGB input, double click and do exactly the same thing. We'll specify the output file uh, and actually we'll choose the format first. So it's format drop downs a little bit different. I'm also going to use a 16 bit PNG, specify output file, and I'll click on that. So I've got a similar name and I'll just put color, color, and I will spend, I will spell color correctly with a U in case you were wondering. Right output to disk. The world must be built before you can export your data. Would you like to do so now? Yes, I would. It'll sit there to think file written successfully, bam. So that is how we output the textures. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we apply them in 3D Studio Max. Peace.